Hey friends, thanks for tuning in to today's video. And before we get to the content we have for you today, I have a special announcement about an event that Cross My Heart Ministry is promoting and sponsoring here in our community. It's a prayer walk for our community children. It's a back to school prayer walk. We're gonna be praying for children who go to public, private schools, even those who are home educated. And so this has just sort of come up very organically. The Lord gave me this idea. I found some local sponsors who are coming alongside and helping me. So if you live in my town, if your zip code is 72761 or in the surrounding areas, I wanna invite you to join me on Saturday morning, August 10th at 9 a.m. These are the t-shirts that the first 100 people in attendance will receive thanks to my sponsors. We'll have 100 water bottles as well. I'm gonna spend some time very briefly when we come together to explain what prayer walking is and to cast a vision for how you can allow what you see to prompt you how to pray. We're gonna wear these bright yellow school bus collar t-shirts and I invite you to find a t-shirt in your closet that's that, that is that collar in case we run out. But then we're gonna very quickly peel off and encourage the folks who show up to go to the school of their choice. Maybe it's a school that's close to their home or it's a school where their grandchildren go, where their children attend, or it's a, a school that is hosted in the church. We have a couple of private schools here and, and churches host those. And because I was a member of the home school community for so many years, I'm encouraging homeschoolers to join us and then to go and prayer walk around their homes as well. So we just wanna be a praying community. I know all of us have our hearts just squeezed and frightened when we hear about yet another horrific tragedy on school campuses across the nation. And so this is me just being prompted by the Lord to take a preemptive strike and make a stand and to behave like we believe. As, as women of God, as people of God, this, this is an event that includes men and women of all ages. We say that we believe in prayer. We believe that God hears us when we pray. We come to Him with the burdens of our heart. And so this is an opportunity for us to take a stand for prayer and to say that our children, the children of the next generation are worth it. We're gonna pray for the children. We're also gonna pray for those who parent them, those who teach them, coach, mentor, encourage, love, drive them, cook for them, and everything else. All these people in our community that are part of our children's lives, we wanna pray for them as well as for our kiddos. If you live in Northwest Arkansas, Saturday morning, August 10th, and I chose that because it's the Saturday before our, before our public schools begin. But also, even if you're a, a viewer and, and you live in Kentucky or, or Texas or Florida or Tennessee or Ohio, I hope that maybe you'll grab a hold of this idea and you'll go ahead and plan a little prayer walk in your community as well. It hasn't taken a lot to organize this, probably recruiting some people to help me with some monetary payment to help pay for the t-shirts was the biggest thing, but you wouldn't even have to do that. The most important thing is to pray. So I hope you'll come join me. I hope you'll consider doing it in your community. Thank you for indulging me with this little idea that the Lord has laid on my heart. And I hope that even if you're not participating in a formal prayer walk, that you will be praying for those in your community. So thanks for spending part of your time to listen to me. And now here's the content we're bringing for you today. Welcome to Cross Some Heart Ministry. I'm Laurie McFarland. It's Monday, so we're bringing you yet another Martha Monday video. Before I get to that, though, I want to remind you, Cross My Heart exists to encourage women to love God and to love His Word. And all this summer, we're continuing to bring you a word from the Word on Fridays, as we always do. But a special treat this summer is I have several of my buddies from Bible study who are writing the word with me and also coming alongside and having a conversation that we're recording and sharing some teaching for you. So I hope you'll come back on Friday. I hope you'll look at the previous ones that have already posted and you'll continue every Friday this month to tune in and watch those videos that my friends have very courageously stepped up to share with me. They're sharing some truth from the word as the Holy Spirit works in their hearts and reveals it to them. But I also hope that you will keep writing the word with us. But today it's Monday, so we're getting in the kitchen, and I have another recipe for you. I have family coming, so I decided to make up something, bake up something sweet. 
And so today's recipe is chocolate sheet cake. Now this is a great recipe because it makes the big long sheet cake. It's fabulous to serve to a group, so you can take it to a family reunion. It travels well, it's a single layer, so you can throw in a scoop of ice cream with it if you like. It's great for your small group event. If you're hosting a small group at your house or need to make something and take it, it's, it's just a great, a great one. It goes together quickly and it only bakes for 20 minutes. So this is something you can whip up and serve in a short time. Got all the ingredients out, so let's get right to it. First thing, because it's chocolate and we're dealing with cocoa and butter and things that can be oily and stain and, and get on our clothing, put on an apron. I always like to cook with an apron, but I intentionally did not put it on because I wanted to make the point and take a minute to talk to you about wearing an apron. I think there's just something feminine and something a little nostalgic about putting on an apron. It reminds me to be sort of like my grandmother, but it also serves a good purpose to to protect our clothing from all those things that can stain. So I am putting a lot apron if I can figure out where the other part of it is here. This is what happens when you record live. Well, okay, where is it? I'm gonna have to take it off. I think I've got the, the neck piece tied around my waist. Okay, here we go. That's what happens when I go live. Should have played a little better. Here we go, now. I've got the waist going around the waist and we'll go from there. Find your apron, go buy yourself an apron. Don't mess with those ones that are only waist down because where I tend to splatter the most is waist up because that's where you're cooking and stirring and making the mess. So we're gonna get things going here. You're gonna need a saucepan and um, because we're gonna heat up and melt that butter first of all. But before we get to that, it's a sheet cake. So it's going to bake in a pan about this size, a 10 by 15 inch baking pan. I love this towel on one because it comes with the lid, which makes it great for storage and for transporting. And the other great thing about my towel on baking sheet is that it's pre-treated. So I don't have to spray or grease or flour or anything like that, but you don't want your sheet cake to stick. So go ahead and do that if yours is not treated to this type of a coating. But a warning, if you do invest in this one, when you serve it, you will not want to use a metal serving piece. I have a little Teflon sort of silicone, small little spatula that's the perfect size to make a little square and serve that up. And so you're gonna to want to protect that finish. Before we get started, I'm gonna go ahead and preheat my oven to 350. And my oven, my oven is convection. And so when I set it for 350, it automatically adjusts to 325. I don't know if you can see those numbers there, but in case you zoom in and see me doing 325, I wanted you to know what's going on there. Okay, we're gonna just jump right into the ingredients. First thing is two sticks of butter. We are going to melt this on the stove. So when I get the first part going to melt, we'll pause the video. And while I get that melted, now I learned from my mom that when you're doing something with cocoa and butter, Get the butter melted, and before you add the other ingredients in there, make sure your cocoa, use a whisk and get every bit of that cocoa all dissolved in there. If there are any little bumps or little bubbles that haven't been dissolved, you will not want that. You want it all to be nice and smooth. So I'm gonna put in two sticks of butter. How can I not be good with two sticks of butter? And there's another stick in the icing. We'll get to that. And then a cup of water. So I'm gonna get these two ingredients all boiling on my stove. I need to probably get an electric flame here so I can continue to do that and talk. After that gets good and dissolved, I'm going to add three tablespoons of cocoa. I've already got that measured out. So I'm gonna pause the video now and go over and get that going and then I'll be right back to continue to one. Okay friends, I'm back. My water, butter, Cocoa mix is just on the brink of boiling. The cocoa, I used a whisk, and so all the little pieces are all melted, and it's all mixed together into this delicious chocolate goodness. So I'm going to go ahead and get ready to mix up the rest of the batter and want those into our chocolate sheet cake. So we're going to go ahead and mix in two cups of flour and two cups of sugar. I'm going to put this in to my, my bowl for my KitchenAid mixer. 
And then I'm gonna pour that boiling solution right on top of it. So two cups of sugar, level that off perfectly here. So there's one cup and two cups. I decided to do the sugar first because those granules all come out easily and my flour will kind of stick and I don't want to get flour down in my sugar container, if that makes sense. So I'll have two cups each of flour and two cups of sugar. So there's one cup of flour and two cups of flour. Okay. Let's get this out of the way and get the tea a little bit better. Let's use that over. Gonna give this a little stir, even though the mixture will take care of all that. Okay, now let me get my boiling pipe, and it, it is indeed boiling. Woo! Is it ever boiling? Okay, here we go. I'm going to pour my, pour my boiling mixture right into my mixture here. Use my spatula to get every drop of chocolate goodness out of here. The oven is preheated. We put that back on the stove so it's out of the way. And we're going to mix all this together. Okay, I've got the flour, I've got the sugar. Next up is a half a teaspoon of salt. Got my measuring cup here. Half a teaspoon of salt. Two eggs, and it says that these need to be beaten. So, a little whisk to let me beat those up. Sloshing it around. Good thing I'm wearing my apron. I saw a little bit of it go flying, but I think that will be right back into the mixing bowl. So I'm going to get this mixed up a little bit here. All this off my spoon. I think I'm just going to use the spatula so I can rake down the sides and get ready to put it into the mixer. Okay, salt, eggs, teaspoon of soda. And then it calls for a half a cup of buttermilk. Now, Buttermilk is one of those things my mom always kept on hand. It's not something I keep on hand. So I am going to use a little bit of milk. I left that in the fridge. I'm going to dash over and get the milk, and I'll be right back. If you don't have buttermilk on hand, here is my little tip and my little trick. You can use a half a cup of buttermilk, and then I'm going to add a tablespoon of vinegar to it. And my mom taught me that years ago. I've done that to make uh, biscuits or different things to call for buttermilk. And um, just a nice little little trick because it's just not something that we keep on hand or that we drape like they sort of did in the old days. My dad likes to drink buttermilk or cornbread and I don't know, it's just kind of something that we used to do back in West Virginia as mountain people, you know, country folk and older folk kind of like their buttermilk, but not so much anymore. Okay, so we've got the buttermilk and then we're going to put in two teaspoons of vanilla extract. You've heard me say it before. But this is one of the things I'm really picky on. Pass on the imitation step and go for the real thing. I love adding these extracts and the little punch of flavor they add to recipes. So two teaspoons of vanilla extract. It's all in there. We're going to go ahead and stick this in the stand mixer. Get it going. And let the mixture do the hard work for us. I'm going to rake down the sides before I put it on there. When you've got this lovely stand mixture for years, I use a hand mixture. If that's what you have, you just use it. But I really like this KitchenAid. It was a Mother's Day or Christmas or birthday gift a few years ago. Can't remember which, but I sure have enjoyed it since my family in Dulluxton bought that for me. Okay. Prep the full shield so it doesn't go splashing all over. And here we go. Lock it in place. And let the mixer do the work. This is all the ingredients that we need for the cake itself. So I'm going to clear my little workspace here. I always keep a wet rag on hand when I'm cooking, but because I make such a mess, and it just helps keep my workplace a little tidy. My recipe here. 
Now, what we're going to do, you know, it's a chic way because it's very thin. It's not like a big, tall cake, layer of cake. That's why it bakes in only 20 minutes because it is very thin. So we're going to put this in. We're going to set the timer for 15 minutes, even though it bakes 20. And that's to remind me that at that 15 minute mark, I need to start working on the icing. Most cakes, you kind of pull in the pan for a little while and then you take them out and flip them and let them fool completely and then you ice them. Not a sheet cake. You want to be sure that you put that icing on the cake while it's still warm because if you try to do it later, you'll have difficulty spreading it. So that's another great thing about this cake. You, you don't have to be patient and wait until it cools to ice it. We want to start icing it even before it cools down. I'm going to stop this, see if my sides need to be raked down a little bit. Looking good, looking very good. Just going to get some of the remaining flour that's dredged up or popped up on the sides. But it's looking pretty thin and nice. So, again, aren't you just loving how quickly this goes together? And it's going to taste even better. You're going to love this. Who doesn't love chocolate sheet cake? Okay, so I think it's about ready to pop in here and have. Nice and mixed together well, and that's what you want. All the ingredients mixed together very good. Let me get a bowl and sort of set under here so that I don't make a mess with all of the drippings off of my battle blade here. Put that in here, get this out of the way, then poise my spatula. And again, I did not spray or treat this pan because it's a Calphalon one that's kind of pre-done for me. But you're going to want to treat yours before you drop your batter in place. So you can sort of see how nice and gooey and chocolate, well, not really gooey, it's actually very thin. It's batter, it's cake batter, so it is sort of thin. But so delicious. I'm going to rake all of that in here, and then I'm going to spread it out to all four quarters again. Sheet cake, it's going to be very thin. It's going to bake very quickly. So you might check it should bake in 20 minutes, but it might be give or take depending upon your oven. Everybody knows that everybody's oven is a little different, and you know your oven just as I know mine. But 20 minutes would be about right. We're going to spread this out so that it bakes nice and even. We don't want any hills or valleys in our sheet cake. We want it perfectly flat. And I'm gonna serve mine up with some vanilla ice cream and it's going to be so delicious. So spread this all out, nice and even. There we go. And ready to bake. Gonna put this in the oven, preheated to 350, 325 on my convection oven. Gotta keep it nice and flat to get it in there. You don't have very high sides. Now, I've got that timer set for 15 minutes, even though it makes for 20. At the 15 minute mark, I'm gonna prepare my icing because I, if the icing will go together quickly. And as soon as that cake is finished baking at the 20 minute mark, I'm gonna take it out and I'm gonna pour the hot icing on top of the hot cake. It's gonna spread out nice. We'll be right back to show you how to make that icing. Okay, the timer is still on, so that's telling me we hit the 15 minute mark. And this is smelling very done. It'll take five more minutes. So I'm gonna set that timer, and during those five minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and whip up the icing. You're gonna see how quick and easy this actually is. I've already started one stick of butter melting on the stove so that I would be ready to demonstrate this to you. So after that butter has been melted, I'm going to grab it over here. And I turned it off. Let me just get it heating just a little bit. I've already measured out my three tablespoons of cocoa. So there's cocoa in the batter and then there's three tablespoons of cocoa, same amount also in the icing. I'm going to use my whisk to get that cocoa all mixed in together very nicely and then we're going to go from there. Let me grab that butter and it is indeed nice and melted. It started to trash congeal on me but I'm just going to give it a little whisk and call it good. Using the same pan that I melted the cocoa butter and 
water in before, no sense dirtying another dish since you're putting the exact same ingredients in there. So I've got my one cup of butter completely melted. I'm gonna drop in the three tablespoons of cocoa, get this all mixed together until the cocoa is all dissolved. No little cocoa balls, no solid balls here. We want it completely melted and that warm butter will make sure that happens with the work of my whisk. So there we go. Need to get another little potato just gonna hold my whisk here for me. Let's add the remaining ingredients. Six tablespoons of milk. I've already measured out the milk. Six tablespoons here. Gonna pour that in. And then three and a half cups of powdered sugar. Now the recipe usually calls to add these in alternate, alternately, a little bit of milk, a little bit of powdered sugar back and forth. And by the way, I had this recipe for years. I'm not sure where it came from. It was on a piece of paper tucked away in my desserts cook, my desserts little folder. And I, I think it came from some church potluck or something like that. So I have no idea how to, where to add the attribution. But I typed it up as it was, shared but again i'm doing it the way i do it which is just to dump it all in and then let the mixture do its work so two cups and then three cups getting down to the bottom of the barrel here and it's hard in this size to rake it all even need just a little bit more of that little crater okay so there's three cups and then another half a cup Get this all leveled up and we are good to go. Okay, three cups of powdered sugar, making a powdered sugar mess, but I'm wearing my apron, so at least it's not on my clothes. Two teaspoons of vanilla extract, and then we are done. Now, you'll notice there's one more ingredient on the counter there. Those are the chopped pecans. If you want to add pecans, you may do so at the end, we're gonna spread the icing on and then the pecans are optional. Gonna be right back. I forgot to grab my mixing bowl, so let me go grab that. Okay, and I'm back with a rinsed out bowl. Got all the fat out of my bowl, so it's ready for me to dump in all the ingredients to make the icing. And I probably should have just dumped those directly into here and I didn't think about it, but here we go. It's gonna pour all this in here. Oh, now my cake is done. Let me turn that off. Turn off the oven. And I'm just going to go ahead and rake the rest of my icing in here. If I hadn't taken time to rinse out my bowl and I've had that done already, that's another little tip. Rinse out your batter bowl for your mixer while the cake is baking so it's ready to mix up your icing. Let all that in here. I'm gonna set this over on the stove out of the way. Let's go ahead and get that cake out of the oven. I don't want it to bake any longer than it needs to. Looks perfect. There you go, can you see it? It's delicious, it's going to be in with it. Looks perfect, very hot. So we're going to go ahead and get this icing mixed up. Get my shield on here. Lock that in place. Get that going. As soon as this is mixed, we don't have to wait for this to cool again. I mentioned that. We are going to pour that hot icing right on our hot cake. And it's just going to spread all over and ice that cake very easily for us. And see how quickly this is fun together. The cake bakes in 20 minutes, the icing mixes up in five minutes, pour it on there, and we're good to go. It's a great one to do ahead of time for stuff and family or for family get together. Everybody loves it. If your family loves chocolates, believe me, they will love this cake. Then you grab a stand up to rake down the side. I got powdered sugar creeping up the sides. So we want all that mixed in with the chocolate. Here we go. Break that off the side. Now 
seal back on. It is, it is just about good to go. Oh, it's looking so delicious and good. Nice and creamy. Here we go. And honestly, if you even use the cake mix or, or cake mix is great, but I just don't think you can beat homemade icing. If you like to take the shortcut and use the cake mix, just ignore the icing and, and whip that up at home. I understand that the cake mix is easier and the icing is easier too, but it's just so much better to make a homemade icing and so quick and easy. I always try to unpack, I, I'm like, before I start grabbing a, the beaters off of the mixture, just as a safety precaution, but I'm just going to trust that that's going to be a, the bricks down, I'll clean it later. Okay, got my spatula, got my, um, my icing nice and mixed in. It's very smooth. There we go. And I'm just going to start pouring this right over the warm cake, going back and forth, making little ribbons as we go back and forth and it's because it's so warm it's just going to sort of spread out for us making the whole cake covered with this delicious chocolate goodness so chocolate 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 if you're sensitive to chocolate and it keeps you awake i guess you'll have to make this an afternoon delight instead of an evening delight but with my crew all coming to visit I don't think this cake is going to last very long, especially if up here it was a little bit of vanilla ice cream. They're going to love it. This is a recipe everyone likes because we are a chocolate family. So if you try this at home, I would love for you to leave me a note below and let me know what you think about it. Who did you make it for? Did you make it to take to a church small group? Did you make it for your family? Did you just make it for yourself, maybe, and, and enjoy that way? So <coughs> this is all starting to pull in different places. So I'm going to move quickly to get this all spread out to cover the whole top of the cake. I don't want any of my cake showing. I want to have the icing covering all of it. It's going to be thin. Now, so this will be icy cake. The icing is very thick. This is a sheet cake, so the cake is thin, and the icing is also kind of thin, so it's pulling in um, thicker in different places. Gravity is ticking in, and if there are some thinner places, that's where the icing is pulling, but I'm just going to use my spatula and try to make it as even as possible, raking it towards the middle and towards the sides, but because it's warm, it's just so easy to do that, and voila! There we go. Still kind of warm. Let me lift it up slightly for you to see. I tell you what, I will take the picture of this when it's finished because it, it's so warm that if I lift it, it's going to pull all towards the sides and probably spill over. Now, the final thing I, don't, I want to mention, this is optional with the recipe to add and sprinkle pecans on top. I'm leaving off the pecans on the whole cake because I have grandchildren coming and you know how little kids are with nuts. You may have folks in your family that are allergic to nuts. And you can use walnuts. I'm going to use pecans. I'm not going to put them on the whole thing. But because I do have some adults that like pecans, I'm going to sprinkle my pecans just on about maybe a third of this. So you can do that as well. If you uh, could do it on half if you want. So I'm going to do it just on a part of this. And the nice thing about adding the nuts while it's still warm is they're just going to sort of dip down into the, the cake icing just a little bit. You don't have to mix it into the icing. You just sprinkle it on top, and then they're going to stay put. And as the icing sort of solidifies and gets hard, the, the nuts are going to sort of be hot there. So you'll see that in the picture that I'd send later. But this is our chocolate sheet cake, and I hope that you will give it a try. I want to thank you so much for coming into my home and spending part of your day with me as we prepare our chocolate sheet cake recipe. I hope that there's some sweetness going on in your life this week. I hope you're connecting with friends and family. I hope you're living in the joy of the Lord and praising the Lord for the gift of your salvation. Salvation is our right, the word 
theme for our bookmark this month, and I hope that you're writing the word with us and checking back on Friday is my friends unpack a verse from our Write the Word bookmark. All of the verses this month include the word salvation, words from the Old Testament, words from the New Testament, but I hope today finds you praising the Lord and just leaning in with wonder and amazement to the old news that's the good news and let it be fresh news in your heart, even if you accept a crisis a little girl that today can be a new day and a new opportunity just to ponder the amazing truth that God became man and died for your sins and for mine, that we have hope for eternity because of the person of Jesus Christ. Enjoy your, your cake, enjoy the sweetness, praise the Lord, love your family, enjoy your week for Crossfire Ministry. I'm Laura McFarland. Oh, 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 oh,